All right, Julie, we are here on a really cold morning and these sheep live in a wilderness area. Mm -hmm. And what are we doing today? We are uh, going to be doing disease testing of the sheep and uh, seeing how the suite of pathogens in this herd relates to other herds across the state as a part of a statewide disease surveillance and research project. I'm going to call her the first 19 adult ewes we get. Okay. But we might get a young ram, we might get a lamb. We'll see what we get. So Emily, you are the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks disease ecologist. Did I say that right? That's correct. We've been uh, working to, with the health lab to develop a health monitoring program for sheep and goats. Um, so I spend a lot of time thinking about uh, a couple of the key respiratory pathogens that have caused epidemic pneumonia outbreaks and kind of chronic problems with lamb recruitment and how, um, you know, how those are affecting populations, which populations are infected, uh, how severely, what are sort of the, the co-infecting agents, and then improve the, you know, the performance of those infected herds or at least mitigate against the spread of the infection to other herds. But I've never been on one of these before, so the, to me, the, to see exciting, what I call yeah. conservation in action is really cool. Yeah. I'm excited to see what you guys do and how you do it. The helicopter is going to bring the sheep here. Yes, the helicopter is going to go up in the hills and drop a net on them. And it's going to pick them up and sling them and drop them right here in this meadow. And we're just going to walk out there, work them up. We're going to swab them. We're going to bleed them. We're going to put a radio collar on them and turn them loose right here. So what are they going to do with the helicopter? They're going to fly over them, they're going to dart them? They'll fly over them and they have a net gun, and they'll okay. shoot a net over an animal. Okay. And then uh, someone jumps out. You say someone jumps out. That's they're pretty steep. Out of the, they're that, that's out pretty of steep country <laughs> to be, quote unquote, getting out on. I've been on my share of helicopter rides. I don't need any kind of crazy stuff like that. So I'm more than happy to just stand Watch. here and try to stay warm and do what I got to do yeah. to be a part of this. They blindfold them and hobble them and put them in a big bag that gets hooked up to the helicopter and then um, they get slung here. The wilderness area comes right down close to the highway here. Yeah, right, yes, right next to it, you bet. So they have to capture them up here, which is right where the wilderness area comes down low and where the sheep are wintering. And those of you familiar with the Wilderness Act of 1964 know that no motorized, mechanized anything. So this is a special permit you guys were able to get from the Gallatin National Forest. Very special, very rare. This is part of a five-year grant for sheep and goat health, and that money comes from a combination of, um, of auction dollars um, okay. and matched with a Pittman-Robertson grant, okay. um, so federal grant. And so that has given us the ability to, to move around the state and, and target anywhere from you know, one to three sheep and or goat herds a year. Yep. Uh, we take a series of swabs. We swab the nasal cavities, and that's to look for uh, mycoplasma ovinomonia, um, as well as one of the pastorellas. That's what we think is important in some of that pathology of the upper respiratory infection. We'll draw blood, and that's for uh, serum and trying to understand what they've been exposed to. We can look for mycoplasma ovinomonia that way as well. And so through the blood, you'd be able to tell if they've been exposed, exposed. to that. Right. Um, and then we'll, we'll take some body measurements, um, measure rump fat, we'll age the animal, um, record sex, those sorts of things. The 
there's a couple of goals for the project. And on the one hand, we want to understand some of the drivers of respiratory disease. Um, but we also are trying to pick herds that are of specific management interest. Either there's a need to understand how to modify number of licenses issued, or um, we're there's thought of translocating animals out, and we want to make sure they're healthy before we yeah. move them. Oh, we right. have recovered some animals that test positive for some of the key pathogens here um, that have been more, you know, mortalities. And okay. you know, the big question is, are those one-off cases, or is that indicative of a larger issue with the herd? I think this is cool. These people know what they're doing. This is like an assembly line. Everyone's got their job, boom, 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 do it as quick as possible. Try to keep the animals as relaxed as possible, be done fast, and let them go. Four and a half hours in really cold temperatures, a bunch of great fish, wildlife, and parks biologists, some volunteers from Montana State University, one really bad citizen volunteer, three guys in the helicopter as the capture crew, and they ended up with 15 ewes that were collared, two rams that were brought in and sampled and tested and everything was done with them. And now they have information they've never had on this native herd here in the Madison Range. They're going to be able to get tons and tons of information that's helpful in how they manage this sheep herd that is actually growing and doing quite well. And it's thanks to all of your dollars, your license dollars, your excise tax dollars, those of you who are volunteers and donors of the sheep advocacy groups, you're putting more sheep on the mountain. Thanks for watching.